Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bilal. I'm a third year MD-PhD student at the University of Maryland and I've been making these videos to kind of go over the application process and things that I found to be beneficial or productive when I was applying for medical school four years ago. It's crazy how fast time flies. So in this video what I want to do is I want to go over some of the general things that I thought were helpful for me when preparing for interviews. So I'm just going to go through some of the interview questions that came up how I prepared for them, and just general things that I thought were helpful. And I know this is probably uh, a stressful time for a lot of people because the interview or the yeah the interview cycle is just around the corner, and we don't really know what's going to happen with the coronavirus situation. But I figured that putting together this video might be beneficial, um, and so I hope you guys do take some benefit from this video. So the first thing I want to go over is sort of how I prepared for for the interviews. Right, I think there's a couple of things to keep in mind. I think people have a general list of questions that are always going to be asked, right? So things like, tell me about yourself, if, you know, and if you're MD-PhD, why MD-PhD? Why do you want to do both degrees? Why not just do an MD or a PhD? Tell me about your research. I think those are probably some of the main, main questions that come up. I'm just going to go through kind of my own process to prepare for these questions. So in the summer, before I actually went on any interviews, I spent some time looking through possible interview questions. So I, I spent a lot of time on Google, uh, seeing what other questions I had come up for other people. And what I did was I made, a, I made a Google Doc and I wrote out my answers for each interview question. The important thing here is that you just kind of want to have a vibe of what you're going to do when people ask you those questions. Don't sit there and memorize everything word for word because first of all, it's really hard to do. And second of all, if you do end up doing it, it's not going to help you much because then your answer is going to come off as super robotic. So for example, with the tell me about yourself question. I thought this was a really hard question because you kind of have to give a pitch about who you are, what you're interested in, what you want to do, all within a minute or two. And it honestly is a hard question to answer. So what did I do? I just kind of wrote down the main points that I wanted to get across. Basically the idea was, if this is the only thing that I could have said during my interview, what do I want the person to get out of it? So what I did was I kind of went through my personal statement, picked out certain points, maybe a point from each paragraph and kind of listed those. And in my mind, in the back of my mind, I tried hitting those points as I was answering this question. I think it was important for me to just kind of have a list of things to go through, but not in order, right? So what I mean by that is you don't want to have it so that you have to say A, then B, and then C, because depending on how you're feeling, you may not go in that order and if you're programming yourself to think in that order, that's going to screw you up. So just to give you an example, someone would ask me, tell me about yourself. What I would say is something like, yeah, sure, I'm from the Baltimore, Maryland area. I grew up there, spent most of my time there. I went to college initially there, but then I ended up transferring to the University of Rochester, graduated with degrees in biology and computer science, and now I'm currently doing research at the NIH. Research or science is something that's always been fascinating for me, but initially it wasn't something that, medicine wasn't really my main interest, it was animals, and that's where my scientific interest was initially. But after seeing the impact of a rare disease, of a rare neurological disorder on my family members, my interest started shifting. And in high school, I explored some research opportunities, uh, but I wasn't sure about the clinical aspect went ahead and engaged in clinical opportunities as an undergrad and I really enjoyed having both a clinical aspect and a research aspect uh, in my life and it was really after doing that but that, I, that confirmed for me that I wanted to do M an MD-PhD program. So since then I've been engaging in different research opportunities and after doing all this, this is sort of the, this is the journey that brings me here uh, interviewing for these programs. So kind of said something like that, paraphrasing really hard. Uh, but I sort of hit all those points there. And I thought that was really good in my experience because what it kind of did was it, it set me up so that people would connect with me beyond just the MD-PhD part of me, right? Beyond the part of me that wants to go to medical school and become a physician scientist. I said things in there about where I grew up, my family, you know, my love for animals. And that sort of, that would occasionally, that would spin off into other conversations. Some people would ask, you know, they'd laugh about like the, what I would say about animals and they'd ask me about shows that I watched or uh, like shows on Animal Planet or, you know, maybe they had a pet or something. Um, so those kind of conversations, they come up. And I think if you're able to connect with your interviewer and show them that you're not just, you're not just an application, but you're a person, that really, really helps. So the other thing I want to say before I talk about the other questions is that interviewing is definitely nerve-wracking. 
I remember my first interview, which is actually back in my home institution at the University of Rochester. I don't think I've ever been that nervous in my entire life. And that's going to be a normal part of the interview cycle. What you're going to find is that as you interview at more schools, you're going to get better and better at it. And you kind of develop this formula in your head because a lot of the questions end up being the same. So tell me about yourself. That's a question that's going to come up every time. Tell me about your research. That comes up a lot. Why MD, PhD? Right? So those questions will come up a lot and you'll get uh, better after every interview, after uh, every time you answer that question. But you can't guarantee that you'll have those opportunities, that you'll have multiple interviews. So I think practice is very important. So go through and go through this list of interview questions and make sure you can explain your research to family members and friends, that you can answer these questions, you know, attend interview workshops. So those can also be helpful. And then when you do that, you kind of get a feel for what works and what doesn't, right? So if you're being a little too robotic, you can get some feedback on that. But there's other things that you're kind of not addressing with these questions, uh, you know, that can help out. People might ask you qu questions about your research that you've never thought of, right? And that's how you'll prepare for it uh, when only when people ask those questions will you think of it. The second question that came up a lot is why MD PhD? So that is probably one of the most important questions that, and I think if you're this far in the game, if you're actually if you actually have an interview, you should probably know why you're doing the MD PhD program instead of a PhD or an MD only program. But I think the one thing that I will say is to make it clear that you understand how hard this path is, right? People want to see that you know what you're getting yourself into. Right? Don't assume that anything is just given to you. Make it clear that you know how hard you're going to have to work for this. Uh, one thing that I did was I really emphasized how much I was doing simultaneously doing clinical stuff and research, and I was actually doing it at the time. Uh, so I told them straight up that that's, you know, I loved doing both, or I loved having both aspects in my life at the same time. You know, make your passion clear. Make it, Let them know, right, that this is what you want to do. This is your goal in life because they see a lot of people who come in and they want to make sure that they're only letting the people in who they know will, will push through all eight years of the MD PhD program. People who are ready for adversity, who are up to the challenge. And so make those things clear about yourself. The third thing is talking about your research. This is obviously a case to case thing, it kind of depends what you did, but make sure that you can explain this to other people. So practically, that's something you should practice with family members and friends. But obviously, if you can communicate your research to them, then you should be able to do it to someone who's a med school faculty member. I would say be ready for, for questions that could come up because people might ask you something that, and you won't know the answer. So try to look for those things that you don't know, you're not too sure about. Go back to your PI, go back to your grads, uh, the grad student that you worked with and ask them those questions that you're not sure about. But on the flip side, if you don't know it, that's completely okay. Just make sure you can talk about it in an intelligent manner. So for example, you can say something like, you know, I'm not really sure, you know, I think it could happen this way or I think this is what might be going on because of X, Y, and Z. So have your ideas there. You're not expected to know everything. You're only an undergrad or you just only, you know, you don't have your PhD yet. And even when you do, when you are doing your PhD, when you are in grad school, there will be things that you don't know. And that's completely okay. So it's a good, it's a good way to kind of practice talking uh, or addressing questions, even when you're not really sure about what the answer might be, uh, because that's a skill that will come up that you'll need quite a lot in, in grad school. All right, so I think those are three things, three important things that come up a lot. Other questions that came up were, you know, tell me about what you like doing, your hobbies. I think for me, this was really, really interesting, but a lot of people t like talking about my hobbies. And that's why it's important to put those things on your extracurricular activities, because like, like I said earlier, people like connecting with other people. And if you can show yourself as a person outside of your med school or your research activities, that ends up going a long way. So I had so many conversations about playing football, about my work with animals. I spent time as in a raptor care center where I took care of birds of prey. I worked at PetSmart and I was a sidewalker for a hippotherapy center. So a hippotherapy center is a place where people come in and they do physical rehab with horses. It's really fun for kids because they think they're just riding horses, but really there are physical therapists there making sure that they're doing certain activities while on a horse that allows them to engage certain muscle groups. And they're having fun, but they don't know it. And so you have people on the side who are just there to make sure that everything's going okay, that the kid is on the horse. And who also is there to keep the 
the kid company. So that's kind of what my job was. And people loved hearing about those little things. Those little things that I was doing outside of school. I think I spent about 50%, I would say easily, like 50% of my interviews were just talking about these random things, about things that I like doing. And that's really the stuff that people, people remember you by. And that's why going back to that first part where I was talking about, tell me about yourself, it's important to kind of showcase those things. But you can definitely talk about your hobbies, your interests. If you can highlight those factors, do a good job of talking about your research in an intelligent way, then you, hopefully you'll be set. Now, as far as what I did the night before an interview, I would go through my document with all the possible interview questions and read through them to have them, have them there in the back of my mind. I would also go through the research profile for each PI that I was going to interview with. I think people love talking about their own research. And it's therefore it's it's good to kind of make a list of potential questions that you have about this person's research. And that does two things for you. The first is it kind of takes the pressure off of you, so you're not just sitting there the whole time talking. And then the second is is that it shows that person that you can ask good questions, you can ask and you're interested in their research. You know, you're showing engagement and that really helps. that goes a long way in your interviews, right? So there's it kind of prevents some of those awkward pauses. And so to go along with that, right, people at the end of the interview, towards the end, uh, they might ask you if you have any questions you should always have questions it kind of serves the same purpose it put, takes the pressure off of you it shows a genu genuine level of interest and you can learn a lot too so questions that i would have are why what brought you to this institution can you tell me about the things that you like about this institution one question that i would ask particularly when interviewing with current medical students is whether there are things about the program that they feel can be improved upon and so what that does it kind of gives you an idea of uh, some of the things that you may have overlooked when look at the school or things that you may not be aware of that could be important to consider. And I guess more general tips would be, make sure you drink lots of water because man, it gets super tiring when you're talking all day. And MD patient interviews are long because you interview, I wanna say about with four or five people in one day. And some of these interviews can last for two days. So it's a long process and you get super thirsty. And then I, I, I know I would have the issue of getting really thirsty and dehydrated and it becomes really hard for me to talk when I'm dehydrated. But yeah, that's it for this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment below and you can also send me a message. My email, my Instagram handle should be in the description below. And if you enjoy these videos, please hit the subscribe button because I'm planning to come out with more videos. And if you have ideas or things that you'd like me to go over, just let me know and I'll, try, I'll do my best to go over those things. But once again, thanks for tuning in. Take care.